Poor baby. No wonder you wore this thing. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most terrifying and memorable masks sported by cinematic killers, monsters, freaks, and psychos. Spoiler alert. And this is the way that you show your compassion and sensitivity, huh? Number 30, The Baby Mask. Happy Death Day. Can I help you? Look, weirdo, I'm not scared. A classic slasher meets Groundhog Day in Happy Death Day, which sees Tree Geldman reliving the same day again and again and attempting to prevent her violent death. She's done in by the Bayfield Babyface Killer, a mysterious murderer who dons, you guessed it, a baby mask. This mask is utterly horrifying, complete with a malicious grin accentuating the large predatory eyes. The idea for this mask came from director Christopher Landon, who was expecting his first child during production. He told Newsweek that he may have been, quote, subconsciously scared of becoming a father, and had the piece constructed by Tony Gardner, the same man who made the iconic ghost face mask. More on that in a bit. What do you want? Why are you doing this to me? Number 29, The Animal Masks, The Wicker Man. Hail the Queen of the May! Hail the Queen of the May! A classic bit of pagan horror, The Wicker Man contains one of the most iconic endings in horror history. Sergeant Neil Howey goes to a secluded island to find a missing girl named Rowan. He eventually learns that Rowan was used as bait and that he is being targeted as a human sacrifice to ensure a good harvest. During the climactic May Day celebration, the islanders are costumed in various garbs, including a number of creepy animal masks. These masks represent the best of pagan oddness, being scary in and of themselves while also representing the collective unity of the islanders against poor Howie. You, Sergeant, are the right kind of adults, as our painstaking researches have revealed. You, uniquely, were the one we need. Number 28, The Jester, Slaughter High. It's the Joker. And Team Captain Skippy Pollock. A mostly forgotten slasher from the 80s, Slaughter High tells the story of a high school reunion gone horribly wrong. Ten years earlier, these students pranked a lonely outcast named Marty, and these pranks left Marty physically disfigured. Now, the reunion is being ruined by a man in a jester mask who is killing off the guests one by one. Ten points if you can guess who it is. The mask is wonderfully designed, mixing the traditional dangling sleeves with a wrinkled old man face. It's a fun little addition to the horror movie Mask Pantheon, and it's sure to disturb those who have a problem with clowns. If you hadn't taken Marty into the showers, none of this would have happened. It's you too he's after, nobody else. Number 27, Cupid, Valentine. Roses are red, violets are blue, They'll need dental records to identify you. Despite being a little-known slasher, Valentine contains a big cast of notable names. Celebs like Denise Richards, Katherine Heigl, and David Boreanaz pop up here, and they are all stalked by a killer in a Cupid mask. Don't expect the cute little flying baby here. Nope, this Cupid is much scarier, looking much like a porcelain doll with the kind of blank, emotionless eyes that befit the creepiest predators. The movie itself isn't very good, but this Cupid mask has been etched into our memory since the early days of the new millennium. I mean, today I find this Cupid mask in the elevator. I turn around and there's my creepy neighbor leering at me. Number 26, The Mannequin Mask, Tourist Trap. He makes me wear these stupid masks. You know why? The slasher genre was in full swing by the late 70s, with timeless classics and cheap imitators released at the same time. This one swings more to the latter than the former, but it still has some redeeming qualities that make it worthwhile. One of them is the villain's mask, which is basic in theory but terrifying in execution. It's just a simple mannequin mask with pale features, large black eyes, and an exposed mouth. Let's be honest, this mask is pretty much just a ripoff of Michael Myers and Leatherface. But hey, if you're gonna copy something, you might as well copy the icons. It's getting hard to breathe, isn't it? I'm going to seal the last openings. You won't be able to breathe. Number 25, Satan, Satan's Little Helper. Are you Satan? Wait, I'm Douglas Woolley. Can I be your helper? 
a black comedy that satirizes the horror genre, Satan's Little Helper is about a nine-year-old boy who unknowingly aids a serial killer in his atrocious crimes. For such a cheap little indie movie, Satan's Little Helper contains a really killer mask. Get it? It evokes an atmosphere of otherworldly horror and is full of fantastic detail that necessitates using the pause button. There are demonic red eyes, black horns, an enormous toothy smile, and even a little billy goat's beard that dangles below the chin. Take this to a Halloween party and watch the compliments come flooding in. Hey, Satan! <laughs> Where's your pitchfork? <laughs> Number 24, The Gas Mask, My Bloody Valentine. Roses are red, violets are blue. One is dead. So are you? There's something inherently creepy about old school gas masks. Maybe it's the large, inhuman eyes that stare into your soul. Maybe it's the circular structure where the mouth should be. Or maybe it's the rubber hose that dangles from the face, looking much like an invasive alien appendage. It's like gas masks were designed to be as unnerving as possible, and this movie utilizes that to a horrific degree. One of the greatest cult classics in horror. My Bloody Valentine is a small little Canadian film in which the miner disposes of his victims with his signature gas mask and pickaxe. Sometimes it's the simplest ideas that prove the most effective. Waiting in the shadows of the Henniger mine just for someone to kill, should they not heed his warning. Number 23, Blank Face, Blood and Black Lace. Speaking of simple ideas, how about the mask design in Blood and Black Lace? It doesn't get much simpler than, well, nothing. Mario Bava's film was hugely influential, inspiring directors like Martin Scorsese and introducing many elements of the giallo subgenre, most notably its striking use of vibrant colors. In it, a masked murderer targets a series of models in an attempt to conceal a secret. The mask couldn't be simpler, being nothing but a piece of blank material stretched over the killer's face. This could have easily come across as cheap and silly, but Bava makes it work with some exceptional direction. It's incredibly effective at preying on our instincts, as we desperately search for some kind of humanity that simply isn't there. Good evening. I must ask you to excuse me. There's no time to be visiting, but it's a rather urgent matter. Number 22, The Phantom. Phantom of the Paradise. I see my music again. Not here, not anywhere. Do you understand? Never again. My music is for Phoenix. Only oh, she can sing it. Anyone else that tries, dies. This is a wickedly bizarre film, but that's what you usually get with Brian De Palma. Sort of a Rocky Horror-esque blowout, Phantom of the Paradise is a rock opera horror hybrid about a masked man who stalks a concert hall. Phantom of the Paradise, Phantom of the Opera, right? The disguise in this film is highly evocative of its 70s rock opera excess. It's a large silver mask in the shape of an owl. Taking one look at this bad boy tells you all you need to know about the film, its bombast, and its penchant for not taking itself too seriously. It's highly memorable, and yes, more than a little creepy. You really think she's that good? She's too good for you. I'll hire her anyway. Number 21, Frankenstein Mask, The Fun House. Classic horror filmmaker Toby Hooper starts off our list with this carnival of terrors. The minimalist plot has a bunch of teenagers doing what they do best in 80s horror flicks, which involves lots of rowdy behavior and ends up leading them to sneak into a carnival's creepy funhouse to spend the night there. Let's spend the night. What? In the funhouse. Crazy. Clearly that's a bad idea, and they end up witnessing the bizarre ride assistant murdering someone. Knowingly stuck with a masked murderer, the teens scramble to escape. There's little explanation at first as to why this killer is walking around wearing a Halloween mask, but we soon find out there's something more gruesome hiding underneath. Number 20, Owl Mask, Stage Fright, also known as Deliria. This sadly underseen and underappreciated slasher film is mostly recognized today for the famous owl mask worn by the killer. When I catch the genius who made this headdress, I'm gonna make him eat it. The film takes place in a theater where a group of actors have locked themselves in to rehearse a musical about a serial killer named the Night Owl. This unlucky group slowly realizes that locked inside with them is an actual recent psych ward escapee and an actual serial killer. As he wears the killer's costume, which includes a huge imposing owl's head, he honors the play's source material and goes on a killing rampage. Safe to say, there will be no opening night. Oh, 
one, kill her, kill her. Number 19, surgical mask, eyes without a face. Horror movie masks aren't merely a more modern trope, growing in popularity with the rise of slasher flicks in the late 70s. This film's early use of a mask to convey terror harkens back to the aforementioned Phantom of the Opera, showing the audience a blank, expressionless face that's hiding more sinister intentions. <laughs> Our protagonist's surgical mask may be hiding her deformed face from the world, but the evil intentions are her father's, as he looks for victims whose faces he would surgically remove and give to his disfigured daughter. Having caused the car accident that disfigured his child, the insane father will go to any lengths to give her a new face. Number 18. Wax Mask – House of Wax Blake? <laughs> What seemed like another typical teen horror flick turned out to be a surprisingly entertaining romp about a group of teenagers trying to get to a football game. Through a series of events, they all end up in a deserted town whose main attraction, the House of Wax, has a sinister past and a disturbing secret. While the clueless teens try to figure out why the wax figures seem all too real, they are stalked by two brothers who have been running this twisted wax museum. Vincent hides his disfigured face with an expressionless wax mask as he kills the innocent victims, who are destined to be the future stars of his museum. Number 17. Animal Masks – Your Next Taking a cue from the classic Wicker Man, Your Next takes innocent animal masks and transforms them into the stuff of nightmares. I just want you all to know how much it means to us that you're all here, so… When a group of siblings and their partners visit their country home to celebrate their parents' anniversary, the party is halted by a group of killers that seems to be stalking the family. Donning lamb, fox, and tiger masks, the killers are determined to use their arsenal of weapons to take out the family members one by one. Soon enough, however, the hunters in the animal masks become the hunted. Number 16. Sack Mask – The Orphanage as a general rule, every parent should be wary of their children befriending invisible kids, especially if he says they're wearing sacks over their heads. This is what happens when Laura decides to move her family into the now defunct and incredibly creepy orphanage she grew up in. Sé que lo está pasando mal, pero quiero que sepa que vamos a hacer todo lo que esté en nuestras manos para localizar a su hijo lo antes posible. Her adopted son Simone befriends the ghostly Tomas, and it's all fun and games until Simone goes missing. A plot involving a previous worker of the orphanage and the morbid history of the building unfolds in tragic waves, but ghostly little Tomas and his sack mask remain the tortured centerpiece of this horror drama. Number 15. Green Mask – Behind the Mask – The Rise of Leslie Vernon While there have been horror comedies in the past, Behind the Mask succeeds in creating something utterly unique and mesmerizing. The main subject of the film being what truly lies behind a killer's mask, this mockumentary shows us the daily life and intense preparation required to be a masked slasher killer. <laughs> Look at that guy. <laughs> you gotta find a group who'll all hang together, a little from column A, a little from column B. How do you create fear with a mask and carefully timed power outages? She's the starting gun. She'll run screaming back into the house and start the panic. Although the movie satirizes the lifestyle of a lonely copycat wanting to emulate his masked heroes such as Jason Voorhees or Michael Myers, Leslie Vernon ends up creating a believable and terrifying persona, and equally disturbing and emotionless mask. Number 14. Grinning Masks – The Purge Any and all crime, including murder, will be legal for 12 continuous hours. With a plot that resembles a political thriller, the filmmakers took the backstory of a future America whose government has approved an annual purge and transformed it into a home invasion survival horror film. So we'll be fine just like always, no worries, okay? The Purge allows all crime to be legal, including murder, for one night only. Although wealthier households have added the ultimate insecurity to keep Purge supporters at bay, the Sandin family nevertheless becomes targets. Their attackers cannot be prosecuted during the Purge, and therefore do not need to hide their faces. This makes their grinning masks more terrifying, as they are simply used for theatricality and pure intimidation. We've gotten gussied up in almost terrifying guises, as we do every year. Number 13. Sam's Mask – Trick or Treat the movie that revitalized the horror anthology, 2007's Trick or Treat offers a fresh variety of ghoulish stories featuring everything horror can offer, from monsters to killers to Halloween goodness. Because this is the one night that the dead and all sorts of other things roam free. <laughs> 
most memorable aspect of this cult hit, and the only thread that ties all the stories together, is the mysterious little trick-or-treater Sam. Is little Sam an ordinary kid looking for candy on Halloween? Wearing a now iconic burlap sack and armed with a deadly lollipop, each subsequent story reveals more and more of the evil that is hiding behind those button eyes. Halloween haters, beware. Number 12. Doll Masks – The Strangers Is Tamara here? Home invasion films along the lines of classic stock and slash horror flicks are a dime a dozen, and most seem to feature some kind of scary mask. What will make a killer's mask scarier and a cut above the rest? Those four ominous words, inspired by true events. With an incredibly simple plot ripped from the news headlines, a young couple comes back to their secluded vacation home, only to soon realize they are not alone. Offering up more tension than gore, this thriller introduces the world to the pinup doll strangers and their bag-headed leader, who will easily be entering everyone's nightmares for a long time to come. Why are you doing this to us? Because you're home. Number 11. Button Mask – Nightbreed Everybody has a secret face. In this Clive Barker film, you see subterranean monsters, disfigured humanoids, and undead creatures. However, this masked serial killer may just take the cake from all of them. While this movie may have flown under the radar as a cult classic, the button mask worn by its villain, Dr. Decker, is clearly the star of the show. Both the button eyes and the zipper mouth really up the creep factor, which is saying something as he's already a knife-wielding murderer. Crazy? No, he's death, plain and simple. Lie still. <laughs> It's quicker that way. Number 10. The Phantom. The Phantom of the Opera. So, we've done Phantom of the Paradise, and now it's time for its obvious influence. There have been many iterations of the Phantom of the Opera throughout the years, each with its own unique design. Everyone knows about the famous half-mask from the Broadway play and Joel Schumacher's 2004 film, but for this entry, we're going all the way back to 1925. Lon Chaney stars as the titular Phantom, who hides behind a simple disguise resembling a human face. It's such a simple design, but incredibly eerie owing to its inexpressive stare. But however eerie the mask is, it's nothing compared to his real face. <laughs> Number 9. Pig Mask – The Saw Franchise Pigs don't generally inspire fear, but combine a somewhat unsettling representation of a swine's head with brutal deaths, and gut-wrenching horror is bound to follow. Worn by Jigsaw and his accomplices to hide their identities, and also representing the Zodiac year in which the killer began his reign of terror, this gruesome disguise dials up the dread in an already horrifying scenario. Regardless of which one of his notorious games Jigsaw has you playing, seeing the pig mask is pretty much a sign that you are screwed. <laughs> Number 8. Mrs. Tredoni Mask – Alice Sweet Alice Didn't I tell you never to follow me? Where's my dog? Already an unnerving film to watch, this movie's creepy overall tone is heightened further by the appearance of a clear mask with a horrible makeup job. Not only that, but when paired with a violent yellow raincoat, well, to call it unsettling would be an understatement. In the hands of a child, it's kind of eerie, maybe even a little disturbing. But on the face of a killer, that ghastly eyeshadow and sinister permanent smile are the stuff of night terrors. <laughs> Number 7. The Hag Curtains Put it on. Auditioning for a movie role is terrifying enough, but when you add a murderer to the mix, things become slightly more intimidating to say the least. Coming from this Canadian 80s slasher flick, the hag mask is nothing short of terror-inducing, with its deep, hollow eyes and frown of murderous intent spelling trouble before the killer wearing it can even strike at you. A sickle, a few rival actresses, and lethal determination bring new meaning to the phrase fierce competition. Maybe show business isn't all it's cracked up to be. Me? I wanted to be an actress. Number 6. Another babyface killer. The Hills Run Red. You know that part about the cutting off the face and stitching on the mask? While this mask might be a fairly recent addition to the horror genre, it certainly doesn't skimp on the scare factor. It might be the shattered human jaw combined with the cracked porcelain cheeks, or the creepy baby doll face. 
or the fact that it's held together with barbed wire. Or it might just be because there's a vicious murderer behind the mask. Or more likely, a combination of all those things. Whatever the case, this is definitely the film's main freakout, and it is truly the stuff nightmares are made of. Hush, little baby. Don't say a word. Number five, Hannibal Lecter, The Silence of the Lambs. Welcome to Memphis, Dr. Lecter. The fact that this otherwise seemingly cool, calm, and collected middle-aged gentleman has to be restrained with a straight jacket and muzzle says it all. Seething with cannibalistic intent and the curious appetite of a thousand stoners, Hannibal the Cannibal's mask serves as a constant reminder that he can straight up kill you whenever he wants. And eat your organs with a complimentary beverage. So, if your occupation happens to be a census taker, you'd best stay away from him if you don't want to become his dinner. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. Number four, Ghostface, the Scream franchise. No, please don't kill me, Mr. Ghostface. I want to be in the sequel. <laughs> Although this entry comes from a franchise that's essentially a satire of horror film tropes, the ghost face mask seems like it was designed to inspire the perfectly crafted scare. The gaping eye holes, the contorted mouth, the white on black coloring, it's not a mask you want to see showing up in your dreams or at your door. Or in any context, really. Despite originating from a campy but clever film, the ghost face mask has become synonymous with sharp scares and even sharper knives. Number three, Leatherface, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise. <laughs> As a general rule, cannibals tend to be a little off-putting, to say the least. A cannibal wearing a mask made of human faces and carrying a huge chainsaw is probably as bad as it gets. However, it's this mask, made from the skin of his victims, that truly drives home the absolute bone-chilling fright of Leatherface. Of course, the chainsaw and his massive size pretty much mean instant death. So next time you and your friends go on a road trip, drive right back around the moment you see a man wearing this truly terrifying mask. Or hear a loud buzzing noise. <laughs> Number two, Michael Myers, the Halloween franchise. Do you like my mask? When'd you make this? Who knew that a Captain Kirk mask could haunt the dreams of children and most adults for generations? Armed with a chef's knife and almost supernatural killing abilities, and an almost supernatural ability to cheat death, Michael Myers is the killer that keeps on killing, and murder has been his bread and butter for four decades and counting. His super creepy mask, complete with matted hair and hollow eyes, delivers the kind of terror that makes you need a nightlight, as if that would really make much difference. What's the boogeyman? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Jason Voorhees, the Friday the 13th franchise. <laughs> The third installment of the Friday the 13th film franchise forever changed the way we view sports equipment. And more specifically, hockey goalies. Jason Voorhees dons his trademark mask for the first time in this film, and thus, nightmares were born. The relative harmlessness behind a hockey mask is quickly washed away and replaced with homicidal bloodlust, as Jason kills teenager after horny teenager, all while sporting a mask he snagged from one of his victims. It's an iconic horror mask that brings to mind menace, murder, and machetes. Which of these masks freaked you out the most? Let us know in the comments below. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.